empathy. Empathy is one of the greatest forms of knowledge, isn't it? We as humans perceive all of our surroundings within a sensory bubble. This sensory bubble is called the Umfeld. Thomas Nagel in his classical essay of 1974 argued that bats perceive the world through sonar. And this is a sense that most of us humans lack. Hence, there is no reason to assume that it is subjectively like anything we can ever experience or imagine. In some sense, we are all trapped in our own perceptual reality. Something like our own parallel realities, where one person's reality differs from the others. It also differs from the realities of any other animal, bird or insect. All of whom also have a conscious experience, which are inherently subjective and very difficult to describe. As we have a very minimal understanding of the different ways of communication through available technologies. As an elephant biologist, I have always wondered what an elephant umwelt will be like. How are they feeling and experiencing this ever-changing landscape? Hence today, I attempt to narrate a story by placing myself into an elephant's footprint. I am a 31-year-old female roaming in the mosaic of grasslands and forests by the banks of River Pramaputra, living peacefully in a herd of five. Including my extended family, we are about 10 females and 10 juveniles. I have made it 21 months ago with a big bull who we ladies fondly call as Kandoro. Mame is the matriarch. She is the wisest and the oldest member of our family. She is the one who is leading us in this ever-changing landscape. Today, I am roaming around in the landscape with all of my extended family because they can sense that something in the air is different. As the dusk falls, I am standing under a tree. Relentlessly followed by these young bulls, I assume they are confused whether I am in estrus or not. I am feeling uncomfortable and have this urge to bend my legs. I am stretching my hind legs until my genitalia almost touches the ground. A scratching pain is building up in my whole body, but my mind keeps saying, you have done this five years ago and you can do this again. My family is all around me, supporting me, touching my back and rumbling back to me to provide me the support and strength I need. Of course, I can't see them clearly as the sun is almost down, but I can feel their presence all around me. I again start stretching my legs and push with all my strength and my embryonic sac is almost here. I again bend my legs and push with all, all, all of my strength when within seconds my calf falls onto the ground. I am overjoyed and so is everyone else. All of my family members are either trumpeting, rumbling, roaring or chirping all at the same time. It just feels like a big orchestra going around me. I am back at the job of being a mom, clearing the sack of the baby and digging the floor with my front foot so that the smell of fresh blood cannot reach the predators anywhere. We have all decided to call him Sahel. I roll my trunk over baby Sahel's trunk and lift his head up. He is trying to stand up. He stood up for a second or so, but he falls down immediately. I again think and roll down my trunk over his trunk and he lifts his head. Finally, he stands up, but I'm also supporting his body with my trunk. Finally, he stands a little longer. After maybe three to six attempts, he finally stands without any support. He's trying to lift his front leg and take a step forward. I'm rumbling to him and motivating him to keep trying. He finally takes his first step, which is extremely wobbly, and he falls down immediately. I am so tired and I need some self-care. Hence my daughter, who is just five years old, helps me in lifting Sahel on his feet. After three more attempts, Sahel finally learns to walk and I am so, so happy about it. The older females are all around me, also helping me lift Sahel onto his feet. We all have to leave this area as soon as possible so that the predators cannot smell fresh blood anywhere. But however, Sahil still hasn't started to suckle. We just walk about 50 meters away and Sahil makes his first attempt to suckle. But he can't see clearly. And he's very confused where my memory glands are. Mame, the matriarch, helps me to hold me, him just right behind my front legs. 
She caresses her lower jaw and just asks him to open his mouth above. Just then he opens and starts suckling. After a month, I'm standing on the edge of one of the largest water bodies. Because out of all the calves and juveniles that are old enough to enter the water, mine is the youngest. So hence, I'm on babysitting duty. I'm babysitting all the other calves and juveniles. Sahil is just one month old and he needs to suckle on to me almost every half an hour. He's quite a curious kid. Just a few minutes back, he was busy ch chasing away some egrets with his fluffy trunk. He still can't control his trunk and keeps stepping onto it all the time. I need to teach him to drink water with that trunk. I'm overwhelmed with how much I need to teach him. But most importantly, I need to teach him to be wary of bipedal animals and sometimes bipedal animals in big objects as well. For the safety of Sahil, this evening, we have all gathered around a big water body so that once we can smell out the predators and charge at them if they come too close to us. I stand on a hard surface leading to the water body, sniffing the air of a familiar smell. Maybe something I know, maybe someone I know, unsure of my footing, unsure to trust or not. I take a couple of steps in front of my familiar smell, but halt. In my living memory, the number of these objects have grown. They have become much bolder, coming closer and closer to us. I rarely remember encountering them in my younger days. These bipedals are even joining their arms and bowing down their heads. I'm really confused by their gestures. My elder daughter has already crossed to the other side. However, I'm scared and I call out a let's go rumble to Sahel. Within minutes, he comes running towards me. I calm him down by placing my trunk onto his back and touching his mouth. Once he is calm, he grows more curious. He runs just to the place where the smell is coming from. Just then, when he's about to touch the big object, I trumpet aloud and within seconds, he comes running back towards me. I step off the hard surface. Once we have crossed, he immediately starts suckling and I feel relieved. The smell in the air is changing and it is sweet now. This smell means only one thing, that the grasses that the bipedal grow, the grasses that the bipedal grow are ripe now. We are all rumbling to one another and deciding to the best place to go eat those grasses. The sun is slowly setting. It's a cold winter night up ahead. But the anticipation of eating a tasty meat tonight is already making me drool. This will be Sahil's first step into the bipedal's world. I'm extremely nervous and anxious at the same time. As the night falls in, it's a beautiful full moon night, a perfect silent night. However, a not so perfect setting because the bipedals can easily see us. However, we can't wait anymore and we rush into the grass right near our house and start to devour it right away. Sahil still hasn't tasted the grasses, he's still suckling. So he's least interested in those grasses. He decides to lay down next to me. I start to devour those grasses and eat it immediately. They are even tastier than I thought. However, the silent night is no more silent. An unfamiliar smell is building up in the air. My aunt rumbles back to me and I know she means only one thing, that we have been spotted and the bipedals will be upon us any moment. I eat as fast as possible, as quickly as possible, and stuff it all in my mouth. I even touch Sahil and ask him to get up. Just as he gets up, a very loud noise with a fire bursts right to our face. He's very scared. These bipedals are throwing like a light onto our eyes. It's very disorting and, and painful. Sahil is very scared. He's trumpeting loudly. I calm him by softly rumbling. But for the safety of my son, I and Sahil decide to quickly walk back to our home. As I look back from my home, my family members are still busy feeding on the same grasses. They are least bothered and content. However, things change again quickly. The bipedals get closer and closer and they all start to get anxious and slowly move back to our home. With Sahil by my side, 
a few months pass by without any disturbance. It's all fun and play. He's becoming boisterous by the day. He gives me such immense joy and happiness. He's also learning to climb onto other siblings. However, my milk is drying up because in this dry season, it's difficult to find fresh grass to feed on. We are all desperately looking for the rains to come. Three months have passed by and the rains are finally here. The smell of rain is overwhelming. But we are all anxious at the same time because it means only one thing, that in a couple of months, we will all have to make a hard journey away from the safety of this home. But today, we all enjoy mud bathing in the fresh mud that the rain brings. Within a couple of months, the flood water increases and we will all have to decide to make this hard journey away from the safety of this home. We, I am very anxious because this will be Sahil's first journey. I am rumbling to all the other family members and forming a big herd before we leave the safety of this home. I lift my trunk in a periscopic view and all I can smell is fresh water everywhere. I am very anxious. I keep rumbling. My and my family's rumbling have brought in 50 individuals into the area. We are all standing beside a very huge hard surface. These large objects keep passing by at a very high speed. It's very disorting. However, we are all waiting for the evening to set in. As soon as these large objects disappear, we will run to the other side and move high up in the hills. As soon as the evening sets in, we run to the other side, move high up in the hills where the flood water won't reach us. We are high up in the hills and four weeks have finally passed by. When I lift my trunk, there is no more smell of stagnant water anywhere. It's just the smell of fresh mud deposits everywhere. Now we decide it's the time to move back to our home. We are rumbling to one another and forming a big herd to move back to our home. Within us, we are a group of 68. An old female made a let's go rumble and we start marching down the hill. Just only a couple of steps later, I realize Sahil is not by my side. I trumpet for him and a rumble, then I trumpet again. But there is no response. I climb back my steps to the hill, looking for him. Once I'm on hill, I can smell him somewhere close by. Now I can even see him lying down a shiny pole. I rush to the place where he's lying down. I touch him, but he does not move. He isn't moving. I place my trunk on his body, but I can't feel his heartbeat. I let out a loud growing roar, and all my family members come rushing to my side. They are touching Sahil first, and then they are touching me. Some are even comforting me by placing their trunk into my trunk. I don't feel like touching anyone except my Sahel. An old female picks up a live wire placed under Sahel's trunk. He would have touched a live wire is what everyone thinks. He has been electrocuted and I am devastated. But with all my strength, I lift his left leg and a lifeless body down the hill. Some family members are assuring me to leave the body behind. But I can't leave him yet. A part of me does not believe that he is no more. We cross the same busy road back to reach the safety of our home. But I can't feel safe yet. A part of me does not feel safe yet. Sahil's body has been with me. I lift him again and place it down. I lift him again and take a couple of steps and place it down. Now it's been three days since Sahil's body has been with me. I feel now is the time to let go. I place him on a ground near a tree which I like to feed on. I take a couple of steps forward 
with my trunk still pointing to his smell. I finally let go of him, but his smell and memories will be with me forever. Dear bipedals, the reason and the purpose for sharing a part of my journey with all of you was to make you realize that all I require from you is space, space on this planet that we both call our home. Thank you.